when you're doing your work on something like that, it starts to look a little bit messy to the, um, to, to the person that's doing it. Sometimes it looks a little bit messy if you don't finish it off uh, nicely. So I have this line drawn. I, I want my bloom to look like it's coming toward me. So I have um, kind of gave myself a little bit of a vanishing uh, point way over here in the down below. Okay, so it's a little bit more wide through here and a little bit more small through here. So this, so if this was the stem and it was a little further away from me, like in reference to like if it's tilted kind of like that, right? Toward me so that the ball of the, the flower is coming up toward me. We're going to do that. Okay, we're going to trick out some, trick out our eyes now. I don't have a globe dandelion in front of me, so I'm going to do this from memory. So I'm going to be really giving myself a lot of grace. I could run out to the yard probably right now and grab one from the yard. But um, I don't know. I don't know that that's really going to be helpful. Let's see. This one is one that I, I took out from the yard on Friday. What I can do is I can pull away all of that away all the stuff and I can get down to the nitty gritty and know that there's like a seed pod. The seed pod is kind of like, it's kind of like a little saucer when it, um, when it stops growing. So look at that. It almost looks like this is a nail, like a, the head of a nail, right? Oval. We just got through doing a lot of eggs at Easter time, so we're going to put a little little oval right there on top of the wide part of this um, this line, this parallel line. You don't have to make it all even, but if you wanted to kind of make it more equal on each side, you could. I don't mess with it, stuff like that because I think that when you get it too perfect, it becomes a little too graphic and it doesn't, it kind of uh, loses its excitement. Okay. So with my blue crayon, I know that there's probably going to be a, um, there's going to be, an, I'm going to call them needles, but they're like the little uh, seeds, you know, little seeds that blow in the wind. There's probably going to be a seed that comes right off of this, this pod. So you see where this is landed right here? I want you to think about this in relationship to, I'm going to draw a line right down where this one is. And I'm just going to put a little dot. Because you're like, well, why in the world would I put a dot there? And if I, like this one might be coming out toward me. Wherever my tip is, I'm going to go straight down plumb and I'm going to put another little dot. This dot's going to be a little bit bigger because it's coming at me. Okay, this one. And you, you can just kind of do this and you can kind of see how this might get started. So wherever this ends is where it begins. So like this one, we had, had it right there. We're going to put its little line right there, and we're going to draw a line. Does that make sense so far? Let me know if that makes sense in the comments um, whenever you get it, because that will help me to understand if I'm, I'm, if I'm explaining it right. So if this is coming out like right there, we're going to draw a line down to where that tip was right underneath it and then we're going to put a line right there and we're going to draw a line. Does that make sense? Okay and then like these things have like hundreds of leaves. Now you can put your crayon away if you kind of got what I was what I was getting at you can kind of see how this this is going to go. So you can you can freehand 
it a little easier knowing that it, it starts to just build out. At some point, you're going to change the color of your, your lines. Okay, because here's the thing. Um, maybe I should have brought one from the yard. These little furry guys, they look like this. They have a seed, right? And then they have like this little, um, little stalk, right? And then they have this little thing that happens like this, right? Up in the air and they blow in the wind, right? Okay, well, once we get our stems down, we're going to start, um, we're going to put some of those little guys all over the place. But if you start getting confused, do that method again. This will kind of help you. This is your crutch. Draw that line right down here. And you can draw whatever is going to be coming at you a little bit more. Draw that where it's a little, little bigger pin at the end. Okay. It right now is starting to look like you have pins th that are going all over the place and it's starting to look a little bit more three-dimensional. Hopefully by now, by doing that little method that I just showed you. When your pins, your pin heads are thicker at the top, that's because they're closer at you. If they're thinner at the bottom, they're further away. Does that seem like that would be true? And then you can just kind of build it out and start layering on those lines. You can change your change your color. Let's, let's go ahead and put the little pen thing there. You can change your color. Go ahead and put your um, if you need to sharpen your crayon, you can just kind of rub it on something that is scratchy, like an emery or a stone. I have a brick here that holds my, my stand in place, and so sometimes I just rub my color right on my stone, and I sharpen off my, I sharpen it up. Sometimes, and I'm going to uh, tell you a little, little secret here. Sometimes whenever you color wax on wax, the other wax will transfer on top of this wax. And it, it just kind of needs to get a little kickstart. And so sometimes you need to clean your colors. Because maybe your colors got too uh, smooth. Whenever they're too smooth... They don't want to grab onto the smoother type paper. That's why it's always nice to have a um, textured paper, like a watercolor paper. Like this watercolor um, panel that I get from Hobby Lobby, uh, that's wonderful for accepting uh, pastel. It's really good for accepting um, uh, crayon. It works really well. But you start building off your little star shapes. Kind of like what we did up here. I'm not going to split hairs over how many um, there are. If you want to research that uh, on your little Wikipedia field trip and find out how many how many little spores are on the the seed pod of this um, on top of a dandelion, then you do that. This is a very, very basic drawing. It's m much more novelty, much more um, child friendly. So you should be able to, to have a great feel about this. If you wanted to build this all out into the globe shape, you would, you know, get, get you a circle if you want and, and make yourself a little circle 
of where all of your uh, dandelions are going to end. If it feels better to go ahead and place a bunch of stars to kind of hold the spot, you know, that that's fine too. If you go around town right now, probably in your area, unless it's covered in snow, they don't have to go all the way down. You can just kind of uh, fake it. If you go around your town, if your town's anything like my town, um, my town's a little bit more country, uh, more rural, rural, yeah, um, we have golf courses all over, and uh, you can see the dandelions are growing in the golf courses that haven't been completely wrecked with broad spectrum spray. And it looks like snow on the ground because in the morning they have just so many of them in clumps and clusters, patches of dandelions over here. And um, they just glow in the sunlight. It's just so pretty. But they're all white. But I'm showing you this as a dandelion, globe dandelion. If you wanted to make it look like it's blowing in the wind, uh, maybe you might want to start your, your dandelion on one side and let it start kind of releasing its little seed and let it kind of drift off if you wanted to kind of play with it. And you can kind of swoop it out and do kind of like a little curl to your uh, to your drifty uh, dandelion. I'm just showing you how to do this one and alternate your colors. It's going to be a little bit more interesting if you do something like that. With it being a white, um, the seed itself is more on the white or silvery looking. Uh, it can definitely pick up the colors that are around it. So why not? be a little bit more artistic and put some fun colors in that. See me using that like it was the back of the crayon right there. It's just put, put some um, color to it. Get a little creative with what it is that you're doing. I'm going to pick up that lavender because I really enjoyed that lavender a while ago. 